I wish to focus on the story of what made Alicia ben Avuya into an Acher, into a different person. The story has it that Alicia was observing a young man who was told by his father, my son, I see a nest in the tree from kosher birds. And the mother's on the nest. The mother hen is on the nest. Go take a ladder, chase away the mother bird, bring me the nest so that we will have some food. The young boy takes a ladder, goes up and chases away the mother bird, and on the way down with the nest, slips and falls to his death. Alicia saw this, and he questioned. There are two commandments in the Torah where God says, in order to increase the days of your life, How is it that the very two commandments, the commandment to listen to father and mother, the commandment to send away the mother bird, the very two commandments that were said by God to lengthen your life caused to shorten this life? And he presented the question to Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva's response was, to lengthen your life means also in the world to come. Elisha did not accept it, for you see, all of the commandments bring us life in the world to come. Why would the Torah promise us lengthening of days if it meant the future in Gan Eden? All of the mitzvahs bring us that. Why would the Torah single out honoring parents, sending away the mother bird? Therefore, he concluded, it had to mean in the physical, that God was promising us a reward in the physical world that we would live a long time listening to parents and sending away the mother bird. If that's the case, then there's something awfully wrong with our tradition. This is the story that supposedly set Elisha ben Avuya in a path toward opposing the rabbis. He was accused of murder of many people, including perhaps the most tragic of murders, that of giving informing on the whereabouts of Rabbi Akiva so that he could be brutally tortured to death by the Romans. How could Elisha, who had been such a fine and exemplary human being, become so vicious? Just because you see a tragedy, we saw a tragedy this week, doesn't explain, can't explain anything regarding the tragedy. Libel, Libish, Klatsky. There's no rhyme or reason for the death. But unfortunately, we see many such deaths. Children die young from diseases. People get into accidents. Occasionally, there is terrible violence, as we saw this last week. But these Terrible things happen all the time. Why would Elisha change his whole life and perspective because of a question of the life of one boy, one child, when there are many tragedies? There are many little boys and many orphans and many widows and many poor people looking for some food. If he was questioning the meaning of life and the meaning of suffering, the Torah, the rabbi should have explained it this way. It is my opinion that this Agatha, this tale, was
was couched in secret terms because of the pressures that the Roman Empire had upon the Jewish community so that a full discussion could not be openly brought to the forefront. So they hinted. The father, in this case, according to my opinion, refers to the leaders and the sages of Israel. As Elijah was called, Ovi, Ovi, my father, my father, by his student, Elisha. So the father refers to the teachers of Torah, the Sanhedrin, the high court. And what is the mother bird over the nest? The mother bird was a mother bird, but not the mother of those little chickadees. For the nest, you see, is a euphemism for the holy temple. As David says, in Psalm 84, Gam Tzipor Motzavayis, Udrer Kein Lo, even a bird has found a home. All doves have coats. And the sparrows have found a nest. But God doesn't have a nest. That was before the temple was built. So the nest refers to the temple. And the mother bird here is not the mother bird of the chickadees, but another foreign mother bird, the eagle of Rome, was on the nest of the holy temple. And the rabbis ordered the people of Israel to follow the king, Shimon Bar Kuziba, Shimon Bar Kochba, to revolt against Rome, to fight with all that they had, and give their lives so that the mother bird, the Romans, would be chased away permanently from, its ne from the nest of Yerushalayim. Elisha opposed this war. He knew the Romans too well in his early days. He knew how resourceful and powerful and vindictive they could be. And he knew that it was not within the power of his countrymen to overcome them. And he fought against this and lost. The vast majority of the scholars proclaimed Bar Kokhba as the Messiah, and Bar Kokhba actually defeated the Romans, but not completely. And that led to his downfall in Beitar, where more than 400,000 people were reportedly killed. In total, it is estimated that over a million Jewish people were killed in the revolt of Beitar, in the revolt of Bar Kokhba. And this is the child that Elisha ben Avuya could not understand how God could let this happen. I know, I know, you're saying, what about the Holocaust? Had Elisha been at the time of the Holocaust, he would have had that same question. Perhaps Eli Wiesel, Eli Wiesel, Eliezer Wiesel. Perhaps he's a reincarnation of Elisha. Same first letters. But clearly, the death of so many, so tragically, destroyed the faith of a beautiful young Talmudic student, a chassid of Vizhnitz, Eli Wiesel, the first night in Auschwitz thousands of the beautiful faces that were killed. He could not understand how God allowed this to happen. And that same horror enveloped the mind and the heart of Elisha ben Avuya. He had opposed the rabbis, told them that they were wrong. They refused to listen. They claimed that the court were the agents of the divine. They needed no prophet. They needed no heavenly sign. They were merely restoring the Davidic dynasty to its original state. And he said, but you're wrong.